do my channel I'm Tanya and I'm documenting my fertility journey to baby number two I already have my fertility journey to baby number one documented on my channel if you want to go and catch up and see the treatments and everything I did leading up to baby number one but I'm coming on today because you guys know this was our first cycle with Clomid for baby number two um, we decided that we wanted to start officially trying January of 2022 it is now May of 2022 and our first cycle was a fail I I really y'all already know if you saw like my ovulation testing video and stuff like I had delayed ovulation and stuff and I just wasn't feeling that confident in this cycle there was a point where I did feel like you know I may actually be pregnant and I had all these symptoms and stuff and I was testing and everything and I thought I saw like faint lines and stuff they turned out to be like indent lines because my cycle started on cycle day 32 which tells me I ovulated later than I thought I was so I got my first surge on like a Friday I got another surge when I'm saying surge if you're not familiar I'm talking about ovulation testing um, I got a positive ovulation test on a Friday the next one came on a Saturday and then my husband left on mother's day which was sunday and i either ovulated on sunday or monday and then my cycle started this past week what day am i on now i have my phone to actually see today i'm checking ovia today is cycle day four for me um so yeah i told you guys so i took notes let me go to my notes before i start getting all over the place i'm gonna be real quick so just for reference we did 50 milligrams of clomid cycle days 5 through 10 and then on cycle day 21 i did get my lab i did get my prolactin and my progesterone check my ob wanted to check my progesterone just to see if i actually ovulated so for my prolactin this is a big one that i get asked about a lot my prolactin results they need to be less than 25 i don't know what the actual measurement is it the their patient portal at my new ob's office doesn't give like a range but it needs to be less than 25 my progesterone is at 13.3 which is good i think it was somewhere close to there when i got pregnant with my son when i had it checked just before i got pregnant with him like the month before and then for my progesterone now y'all know i had my progesterone check checked in february so your progesterone um to confirm ovulation should be between 1.8 and 24. my progesterone was at 23.3 and in february i remember i told you guys my progesterone was super low and it was at 5.7 so it was in normal range but it was on the lower end of normal which had me like questioning like whether or not my body was doing what it was supposed to do and i was going to be asking for progesterone suppositories so those are what my numbers are my prolactin again is 13.3 my progesterone is 23.3 so that is pretty good that my levels are in normal ranges it's good that tells me that my you guys know i start taking metformin i'm taking metformin and i'm also still taking my um what are the tablets i'm taking y'all my memory is terrible right now I'll put it on the screen <laughs> and I'm taking prenatal vitamins too um, but that tells me that something is working and it could have been you know a mix of the the medication that I'm taking along with the Clomid but going forward because I feel like Clomid kind of threw things off for my body and I know it thins out your uterine lining and y'all already know i'm not feeling that great about my ob not doing any type of monitoring and i know some of you are like ob's don't monitor yes they do i've had ob's i've been through lots of doctors going through fertility treatments and 
some OBs will go ahead and check your uterine lining. They will check to make sure you don't have cysts before you start COVID. If you have polycystic ovarian syndrome like I do, um, they will do some type, some levels of monitoring. They may not do it as intense as a reproductive endocrinologist may, but I have had OBs that have done all these same checks that this OB is doing, but also check my uterine lining before I start a cycle with COVID. Also check my ovaries to make sure I'm not, I don't have too many like cysts forming. And then they will also check my ovaries to make sure that my ovaries were looking like they're about to ovulate because I would take gonna left injections or um, gonna left injections and also the HCG injection or trigger shot and stuff. So. Um, I've had those types of fertility treatments done on the OB level, so it can be done at an OB. I said all that to, to say um, because I got quite a few comments of people telling me like, OBs don't do all that. Yes, they do. Yes, they do because that's where I started before. So that's how I have that expectation for OBs set because I've had it done at OBs before. This isn't my first go round. Um, so going forward, Dion and I um, kind of want to take a break, I guess, a little bit. I don't feel, I'm not feeling that confident with this OB not checking on anything. Um, I kind of want to, like, she's a good doctor and all. I haven't really seen her. I haven't seen her since March. She's a good doctor, but... I'm used to things being done differently and having to talk to her nurse and stuff all the time is just kind of like turning me off a little bit. So I'm kind of like, maybe I'll make an appointment to go in to get a referral to a reproductive endocrinologist in this area. I just know when I start dipping my toe in the RE realm, the cost is gonna start <laughs> going up. And that's not really what I wanted to do I wanted to start on this like base level but I guess since we're almost like officially six months in we probably should start looking at RE so that's kind of where I'm going with things right now I'm just kind of gonna do some research on reproductive endocrinologists in the area see if how many there are for me to research I haven't even looked that far because I know Clomid like really starts to thin out your uterine lining and stuff like that I guess I could call and try to do a cycle of letrozole too I just don't respond well to letrozole I've never had letrozole be successful for me like I've had Clomid work for me in the past I don't know I guess I'm kind of in limbo also this two-year-old stage we're at with Lux has me kind of like, um, <laughs> what am I getting myself <laughs> into? Like, do I really want to do this again? Really has me questioning everything because y'all, this boy, he is testing me on a whole nother level. I mean, testing me. I mean, the struggle is real. And I'm just like, Lord have mercy do I want to do this to myself again? Like, that's how, like, some of my days at the end of the day, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> like, oh my God. But that's kind of where we are now. I guess we're going to try on our own. Um, well, one, I'm picking back up my fitness journey because I slacked off a whole lot um so I'm picking back up on my fitness I'm still going to take my same supplements and my metformin and stuff and yeah I'm just gonna I dropped off I fell off with like my water intake and stuff so I'm kind of going to get myself back in the groove of things after doing all the traveling and stuff like that like we got sick in April and then may came along and we got this last minute trip we threw in the mix and everything has just been thrown off for me so i'm kind of going to use june to get back in the flow of things and then we'll pick back up really i guess going really going at it in july maybe july august because lux is going to school so yeah that's kind of where i am right now i guess june is like a break 
a kind of a break month i'll see how i feel if i start noticing anything maybe i'll test for ovulation or anything like or something but we'll see also uh Brittany mentioned i talked told you guys about Brittany before i met her in the comments here on youtube on one of my videos a long time ago and she's my girl so but she told me about temp drop and i because she asked me about checking my basal body temperature and i used to do that back 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 in the day but y'all now that is not an option for me with this boy sometimes he's waking up in the middle of the night if he's having bad dreams he's going through these weird waves of like waking up in the middle of the night not and just kind of like i don't know i don't know for the most part he's sleeping through the night we're getting 12 hours of sleep at night and he's doing just fine but every now and then it's like one week out of the month he might throw in like uh three days he's waking up crying afraid of the ceiling fan or whatever but because of that i was like no i cannot be waking up to take that temperature so she told me about this thing it's an armband that you wear called temp called temp drop so i think i'm gonna order that i'll link it down in the description box so you guys know if you haven't heard of it i had never heard of it before she told me about it and i'm thinking about starting that just to kind of get like a baseline going baseline go going to to monitor my temperatures my basal body temperatures to see when my body is ovulating i was looking at some of my old charts from 2019 earlier today and i was like i really do need to get this thing ordered because my sister's calling but that's what i have going on so i'm looking into temp drop i'm getting myself back onto routine june is kind of like a break month kind of break month i don't even want to fully say it's a break month for us and um yeah yeah i hope that has filled you guys in i'll be posting blogs and stuff like that throughout the month of june i guess to keep you guys updated on like what what else we have going on while we're not so focused on trying to conceive through the month of june so yeah i hope you guys are all doing well i hope you guys are getting some positive news new fertility treatments i know some of you guys had treatments coming up um transfers coming up this month baby dust baby dust baby dust our babies are coming our babies are coming our babies are coming you guys stay encouraged we're gonna take it one month at a time we're gonna take breaks when we need to and we're gonna take it one cycle at a time so i'll see you guys in the next video bye